Hey friends, welcome to Whiskey and Wit. I'm Whitney, and in today's video, we are doing some Dollar Tree DIYs. These are just general, not seasonal. You could use them year round all over your house. I think they turned out super adorable, so let's get started. First up are these fun picture frames. Dollar Tree has some pretty frames on their own, but I wanted to spice them up a little bit to put on gallery walls throughout my home. So for this, I used two of these free hugs hanging signs as well as two of these whitewashed picture frames in four by six size. So step one was to dismantle the signs and remove the sticker from the back. It came off pretty easily, but you can use a hair dryer or a wet rag. Then I grabbed some wood filler. I got this at Dollar Tree a long time ago, but you can get it at your hardware store. And I made sure to fill the holes fully sand them down when it dried, and then I was ready to give the sign a coat of white paint. I ended up doing two coats to make sure everything was covered and made sure to get into all of the fun little creases. Then I recently picked up these really fun stencils from the Target Dollar Spot. There were four in a pack for three bucks, and I knew I wanted to do something with them. I just wasn't sure what, and you'll see them throughout this video. So this first one is this really pretty diamond shaped, and I decided to do a traditional black and white. I'm just using black acrylic paint, a disposable makeup sponge, and I'm just dabbing off some of the paint before I go into my stencil, just because if you go too crazy with the paint, it's going to kind of smush underneath the stencil and bleed everywhere. So the reason I'm getting the good clean results here is that I am going up and down in a stippling motion, and I'm making sure that I don't have a ton of paint on my little makeup brush. I'm just tilting the sign and using my stencil in each of the four quadrants of the sign to make my step and repeat pattern. Then for my second one, I decided to use some of the truffle paint from Waverly, as well as this really fun line motif from the same stencil pack from Target. And I thought this was fun. It looks kind of boho, kind of farmhouse. I like that it was neutral with the colors that I chose, but a fun print to spice up the gallery wall. Then I opened up my frames, replaced them with one, a picture of Finn, obviously. And then I also did a picture of Alex and I at a Walt Disney World trip that we took back in 2018. Still one of my favorite trips. I cannot wait to get back to Disney after all of the craziness is over. But I popped off the back so it would sit flat on the sign and I glued the frame on to the backing. Now I realize that I'm not going to be able to change the images here, but I don't mind. If you want to be able to change the images, this might not be the project for you. But I really love that picture of Finn and the picture of Alex and I won't go out of style. Then I just put two heaping globs of hot glue on the back of the sign, added some jute twine, and then added a little bit more hot glue over the top to hang it. Now you can either lean them up against something like I did here, or you can hang them on the wall. Now they are not heavy at all, so with the hot glue, I just use heavy duty Gorilla Glue hot glue, and they are doing really well on the wall. One of Alex and I, I added to our gallery wall in our living room. I absolutely love this photo of us and I really like how it goes with my overhaul farmhouse vibe, but it's still a little funky and a little different and adds some character. I was in dire need for some artwork for our guest bathroom downstairs and these did just the trick. Now I was inspired by this particular set of wood signs from Etsy and I wanted to make them myself. So it is freezing, freezing, freezing here in Illinois. It warmed up a little bit, but I did not want to be outside cutting wood. So I decided to try this wood technique that everyone's doing all over the internet. And I think it turned out really well. So the first thing I did was grab some black Dollar Tree poster board and I measured and cut it in half. I'm using a self-healing mat and a rotary cutter and this is life-changing. I have never done a rotary cutter on poster board, but I did see it on the tutorial I followed to create the wood pattern on Emily and Lizzie's blog or Lizzie and Emily. I will link the information down below, but it popped up on my Facebook feed and I took it as a sign. 
So then I cut three inch strips of the white foam board. So then that way I had a three inch border around each of my signs. So I'm doing everything twice since I made two signs. Once my three inch pieces were cut, I lined them up on the outside of my sign. And I first marked where those longer pieces needed to be cut so there wasn't an overhang. And once those were trimmed, then it was time to create my 45 degree angles. So I started with a 45 degree angle. I have a little guide on my self healing mat to cut a 45 degree angle. So I did that and then I marked the next one, cut it, laid it back down, did a, another 45 degree angle, marked it, cut the next one and worked my way around each of the signs until all of my corners were two 45 degree angles came together to make a 90 degree corner. So once I did that for both of my signs, I made sure to mark on the back of each piece sign A or sign B, just so then that way I wasn't trying to figure out which one went with which. I just knew these four went with sign A, these four went with sign B. So the first step for this wood technique is using some antique wax from Waverly and you want to make sure that you have a paintbrush with bristles. So no foam brush for this. Go through and you don't have to worry about it being fully covered evenly. You kind of want it to be uneven. That'll give you the wood texture. And as I'm going, I'm painting my foam board and then I'm kind of bending it using my fingers to make some creases in there and that is going to give you the kind of weathered wood look. I would suggest doing it after you paint because if you do it before then you really have to use some extra product to get in to the creases but here's what it looks like when you don't pop it and when you do. Then once that's dry, I went through and really lightly dry brushed some black Waverly chalk paint over the top just to darken it up a little bit and give it a little character and texture. Once that was dry, then it was time to finish the edges. So nothing says this is not real wood like the icky white like foam edge coming and popping out. I covered that with some more wax and then if you get any overhang like you see here, any of that product coming around, you can just use your same brush and kind of buff it in. And then if you've got any areas where you've got that harsh black, you can buff it in as well. Then I decided to cut my two images from things I found on Canva on my Cricut, but you could definitely hand draw these if that's your thing. And then it was time to assemble the sign. So I knew, okay, these are the A sign pieces. These are the B sign pieces. I used some hot glue and attached them to the foam board. So it looked like it was a wood bordered chalkboard. Then I used some paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl to transfer my decal onto the poster board. And the reason I'm using the paper transfer tape is it's not as sticky as regular transfer tape. So it's not gonna rip up that poster board with it. And I was so, so happy with how these turned out. I was like, it looks good and easy enough through the tutorials I've seen, but I didn't know if I could do it. Let me tell you, these are super easy. And then to finish off the look, I knew I wanted to hang them on the wall. So what I did is I measured halfway on the back. Then I did the same hanging thing technique, I guess, that I did with the other signs, with the picture frames. And I'm just pulling the center to that center point so that when I go to hang it, I know that it will be centered on the wall. So overall, with these faux wood pieces, I had three pieces of foam board. I didn't even use all three pieces, a little bit of vinyl and the supplies to paint and distress the outside. But these are super nice. They fit really well in my bathroom. And I also love that they're not super heavy, especially as Finn gets older. I would much rather if something was going to fall, it'd be this poster board rather than real wood. So if you've been around on my channel for a while, you know this area is reserved for these pennant signs from Dollar Tree. I have some for pretty much every season, and so I've got two more options for you today. The first one we're going to do is the welcome-ish sign, and we're going to paint it a gray buffalo check. So I gave it a first coat, probably three coats total of white Waverly chalk paint. And if your sign has a lot of glitter on it, you can just use some sandpaper to really rough that up before you paint over the top. 
Then we are going to tape off our buffalo check lines. So I'm using one inch painters tape and I'm going through and taping off vertical lines. So I stick down a piece of tape, I use a little spacer piece, and then I put down another piece of tape. Now this might look a little funny and it might look like I'm not matching up the tape totally, but I used a scrap piece of tape that had some white paint on it. So it's a little trick, it's looking kind of weird, but trust me, you're gonna line up the tape and it's gonna work just fine. Then my first color is Silver Lining Waverly Chalk Paint, and we're gonna start with that light gray and finish off with a dark gray versus a black. So once that's all painted, you're going to peel off those vertical stripe pieces of painter's tape and put them to the side, because you're gonna need them later. I just stick them to the side of my table. And then I repeated the same process horizontally all the way down the sign. Now a good tip to think about which one to do first, which one to do last, do the one first that has the least amount of pieces of painter's tape. So then that way you have less to stick back down later on. Now this is a trick that will really help you if you're worried that you're not gonna put the tape in the right spot. Go through and mark yourself some lines and put axes where the painter's tape originally was. So where the white lines are, that way when you go to paint like this and you're not able to see through, it's going to tell you where to put your painter's tape back and you'll see in a second why that's important. So same color, paint it, let it dry, and then stick your painter's tape right back on the top. You're going to stick it where you marked it and where those original white lines are. And what you're doing is you're basically creating a grid to say here is where the lines overlap and here's where those dark squares should be. Then I went through with the color elephant and created those dark squares. And then I don't wait for this one to dry, I just go ahead and peel the painter's tape off to reveal my buffalo check and then I let it dry fully. This sign, I had a Dollar Tree little oval that was already stained. I didn't end up using it for a previous project and I put the saying on it, glued it to the sign, and then to finish off the look, I had a little bit of leftover boxwood from a Walmart pick that I had from a previous project. I just wrapped the center with a little bit of jute twine and glued it to the top to finish off the look. Now, can anybody else relate? Leave me a comment down below. I feel like as much as I wanna hang out with people and I miss socialization because of the pandemic, I also love my hermit time. So this welcome-ish sign that says, it depends on who you are and how long you'll stay is totally right up my alley. I definitely wanna socialize and hang out, but I also want to be able to go to bed early and hang out and do what I wanted to. So let me know down below, are you just dying to see people or are you secretly like loving this hermit lifestyle? And then if words and sayings aren't your style, I've got another variation for you. So this one, we're gonna use the same sign. However, we're gonna use some wooden dominoes that I found in the toy section to give it kind of a shiplap subway tile vibe with the dark wood. So I'm going through with my miter shears and literally just cutting off a little bit of the ends because the domino edges are curved. So I'm just cutting it so I have a regular rectangle and I'm laying the pieces out as if you would see someone do subway tile or different types of shiplap where the middle of one is the end of the next one. So then once I did everything I could with the full pieces, then it was time to go through and mark and fill in any of those edges. So it's basically like if you're cutting tile or if you're cutting like flooring or anything, you go up to the edge, mark it, and then cut it. I'm doing that again with the miter shears. So then the goal is to cut all of your pieces so then that way you have the same shape of the sign just covered in these different wood dominoes. So then once that was complete, I went through with my glue gun and hooked everything down before I stained it just so then that way I knew it wasn't going to budge on me. And also if you open the pack of dominoes and freak out and say there's writing on them and they're waxy, don't worry, that's what the front looks like. But the back is this pretty wood that takes stain really well.
But once everything was glued down, I went through with some dark walnut stain by Minwax just to make everything the same color and kind of make it pop, but also make it muted. I was thinking about painting it white, which you could absolutely do, but I really liked the dark wood vibe. When I was looking for a stencil for my other project, I saw this herringbone type pattern and thought this would look really good on this sign, especially because the bottom is essentially an arrow. So kind of playing up those similar shapes in different directions, same process, used some white chalk paint, dabbed off excess, and then went through and just stippled and did the stencil about four times until I completed the whole sign. My last step was to wrap some more boxwood that I used on the other sign and glue it to the center of the piece. I love how the boxwood on the sign ties it to this boxwood wreath where I hang those over my coffee bar. I hope you guys enjoyed these general everyday Dollar Tree decor pieces. I am definitely a seasonal person. I love doing seasonal DIYs, but I'm so glad that you guys asked me to do more regular everyday pieces. Let me know down below, should I do more of these? What type of style are you currently into? What can I create for you? Let me know. I always get the best ideas from you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.